Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on constructing a Bland-Altman plot using SPSS. The Bland-Altman plot is a graphical method used to compare two measures. It plots the differences between the two measures against the averages of the two measures. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you see we have an ID variable, an independent variable program. And here you can see the labels, individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual. And then we have two depression inventories. And we want to compare these two depression inventories with a Bland-Altman plot. So first we need to create two new variables, one that represents the difference between depression 1 and depression 2, and one that takes the average of depression 1 and depression 2. So we'll go to transform, compute variable, and I'm going to create the difference variable first. And I'm just going to name it difference. That's a target variable, so this is the name of the new variable that we're creating. And the numeric expression here is fairly straightforward. It's depression 1 minus depression 2. So this is ready to go. We'll click OK. And moving back to the data view, we can see the differences between the scores are in this column, this variable, labeled difference. So between 15 and 70, the difference is 18. And there we have uh, negative 18. And of course, the same calculation is made for all these different records. So now moving back to transform, compute variable, we'll calculate the mean. So the target variable here, the name, I'll just make it mean. I'm going to clear out the numeric expression for calculating the difference. And we could calculate the mean by adding depression 1, depression 2, and then dividing by 2. But there is a built-in function in the function group here in SPSS for mean. So if we scroll down to statistical, double-click on mean, and we could just populate the arguments with depression 1 and then depression 2. And click OK as this is ready to go now. And again, move back to the data view. We can see now the means for all these pairs is calculated in, these, in the uh, mean variable. So before we plot the difference against the mean in the Bland-Altman plot, we need to run a one-sample t-test. So we'll go to Analyze, then Compare Means, and One-Sample t-test. This is what the dialog looks like by default. The test variable here will be Difference. And the test value will remain 0, which is the default value. So now we can just click OK and run the one sample t-test. And you see we're provided uh, certain information. We're going to need this information for some calculations. We have the mean and the standard deviation, which we're going to need to record. And then we have the uh, p-value for the one sample t-test. And here it's point 203, so it's a non-statistically significant result, and that's what we need to continue forward with the Bland-Altman plot. So if this were statistically significant, we would not move forward with the Bland-Altman plot. So as I mentioned, we need to record the mean and the standard deviation. So what I've done is I've already recorded this in Excel. So I'll go ahead and bring that up. And you see I recorded here the mean, and then down here the standard deviation. Now below this you can also see these 
other two values and these represent the upper and lower 95 percent confidence intervals which I'm going to need for the Bland-Altman plot and the way I calculated these is I took for the upper I took the standard deviation so equal sign open parentheses the standard deviation times 1.96 close the parentheses then since I'm this is the upper limit I'm building I'm going to add this to the mean so plus a1 in this case and you can see that's 24.84 the same value I have here to calculate the lower 95 percent confidence interval I'll start the same way it'll be a3 the standard deviation times 1.96 in parentheses but this time I'm going to move to the left of the open parentheses and put in the mean and then subtract this expression of the standard deviation times 1.96 so this will give me the lower 95 percent confidence interval which is negative 30.26 you can see it's recorded down here so I'm using Excel to record these values because I'll need them later for the Bland-Altman plot but you could also record these data in SPSS or another program uh, where you could have access to them. So then I can move back here to the output and you can see I can arrange it so I can see these values the mean, the standard deviation and the upper and lower uh, confidence intervals while still being able to access the functions in SPSS. So now I'm going to construct the uh, Bland-Altman plot. I'm going to do that by going to Graphs, Legacy Dialogs, then down to Scatter Dot, and I want to select Simple Scatter, and then click Define. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. On the Y axis, I'm going to want the difference. I move that over. On the x-axis, I'm going to want the mean. So I'll move that over. No other modifications are needed. I'll click OK. You can see it produces this graph. On the y-axis, I have the difference. On the x-axis, I have the mean. So I'm going to need to add three lines to this plot. So I'm going to double-click here and open up the chart editor. And you can see it opens up the smaller properties dialog next to the main chart editor. I'm going to move to options. And you can see there's a Y axis reference line. This is what I want to use. There's also an icon for this uh, here on the menu. So you can see the position by default is set to zero. And I want to edit this. I want it to be equal to the mean, which I've recorded here in Excel. It's negative 2.7111. And I'll make sure to click Apply so that, that line moves. If I were to move to another tab before clicking Apply, it would stay at zero. It would not move. But, and I do want to move to the other tabs because I want to make this line a little more visible. So if I move to lines, by default you can see it's a weight of 1 and black. So I'm just going to make it a bit larger, say 2.5, and make it red and click Apply. So that's going to make that line a little easier to see on the chart. Then I want to add the upper 95% confidence interval. So this time I'll just use the icon here, I'll add a reference line to the y-axis. And you can see this is the uh, default position, which is not what I want. So I'm going to uh, select that and then type in the 24.84201, which is over here to the left in Excel. And again, I'm going to click Apply. 
before moving to another tab. And on lines, I'll go to 2.5 and I'll make this line green. And then click Apply. And then I want to do the same thing for the lower confidence interval. So I'll go back to add a reference to the Y axis. You can see the default position it comes up with. I want to replace that with the 95% confidence interval lower limit, which is negative 30.26421. Click Apply, and then move over to the lines. And again, I'll change this to 2.5 and green to make it match the upper. And click Apply. So I'll close properties here. And as we take a look at the uh, Bland-Altman plot, we're looking for uh, evidence of proportional bias. And of course, any uh, points that are outside of the upper and lower 95% uh, confidence intervals should be noted. And on this plot, we can see there's a cluster of scores where the mean is a high and the difference is negative. You see in this area here. So to further inform us about any potential proportional bias, we can also run a regression. And I'll do that by moving back to the data view. Of course, it can be run from the output view as well. Go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. And in this case, the dependent variable is difference. And mean will be the independent. No other changes here are needed. We'll click OK. And here below the uh, Bland-Altman plot, we have the output from the regression. And of particular interest uh, from this regression is the coefficients table. The uh, beta, unstandardized coefficients here, beta value for the mean. We want that to be as close to zero as possible. And you can see here it's uh, negative 0.929. And we'd also like to see a non-statistically significant result, but here we have a statistically significant result. So with the statistically significant result here, a value, a p-value below 0 0.05, we would assume there is proportional bias here. If we had a non-statistically significant result, we would assume there is no proportional bias. I hope you found this video on constructing a Bland-Altman plot to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.